You could tell that wasn't even a lot of leaves. It's the way he has the camera positioned. I see bigger piles than that every time I look at the toilet. Mom! Mom! Come and look at this turd I left in the toilet! It's huge! Alright, so we're not going to show this whole project. I have shown it before. Um, but what we do is, in this one, we had leaves over there. It's pretty wet over in that area. So we blew all those leaves past these beds. You know, the raised boxes here. We're putting it all in this yard. We just got to get enough clearance. All the leaves stay in the bed per customer's request, right? We got to bust it off of the, uh, this, the rocks. You know, people ask if I mulch. Yeah, sometimes I do. And uh, is it good for the grass? Well, you know, it really depends on how much you're mulching. Over there, that's not a whole lot. Over here, look at all this, man. This is, uh, I know it doesn't, it doesn't do you justice right here, but that's about two to three foot high. And uh, I mean, up there, it's up to the, the second rail on the fence. So this area has little to no grass. It just doesn't. That's what they want, so this is what I do, and uh, I'm fine with that. It's much more economical than hauling it away. So what I did is I split everything up here. We want an area over here. I can work that with the mower. We'll have to split this, so that goes over there, and this goes over here. But we want it off the trees, so I can work it, and I don't have to worry about build up on the trees. Everything's got to be away from the deck. There were a ton of leaves on the deck. Cause I mean, just look at how many oaks there are. I mean, it's a massive amount and here let me let me just set you up right here okay i'm gonna set this up so you can see and it's, you know above knee height here. it's pretty high and it's higher in some spots so we clean it off the side here, all that's going to get dusted by James. While I'm mulching it up, he'll blow it all down here. And we're just going to shred it up. So this area, we've got the trees. Well, when I was using this, the 36, the 36 fit in here all right. So I wasn't too worried about that. And I used the mower to move it over. Now that we've got the 61 and I'm using the 61 to mulch. Well, well we got to get it past those trees. Here's the thing about using your mower. Sometimes you don't know what's in the property, right? Because I've been working here for a long time, so I know it's here. Like, it's, I don't even know what that's here for. It's there. Something else there. Oh, that's root. So, you, know, you might want to know if there's sprinklers. Like, okay, over here, they've got a raised sprinkler head. No, it's not flush with the ground. Well, if you come using your mower, you knock one of those off, you're gonna have to replace it. So you need to be very aware of what you're doing and know what you're getting into. Because you're kind of going in blind when you use the motor to clean up leaves. That's why on a large majority of them, when we can, we just push them to the truck and blow it off. And it's quicker that way sometimes. Mulching's quick, but vacuuming up's pretty much the same speed. So yeah, this is a lot more leaves than it probably looks like. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and get this started.
garage. So the first thing that I did there is I used the mower to push everything into a pile so that it's, um, you know, it's condensed as I do that too. You know, it's getting shred up and it's it's got a finer shred each time I go over it. Um, you notice that when I'm pushing it, I don't use the full deck to um, push all the leaves because what's going to happen is it's probably going to bog up the, the mower um, and you're, you're going to kill your mower. So not until like this scenario when, you know, the leaves are pretty well shred up do I um, use my whole mower to actually go over it. But having said that, if you have leaves that are really, 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 really fine shred up and they're really thick and you go over it like that with your mower, you're probably going to do the same thing, bog it up and kill it. So normally what I do is this is kind of the second stage. So the first stage is I'll, I'll put it all into a circle and then I will um, kind of go over it and shoot it outwards and then when it gets really fine I go around and I use the outer um, say six inches to a foot on the left side of the deck. Now the left side is not the discharge, the right side of the deck is the discharge side. So what, what happens is when I do it that way the leaves go in on the left side and they have to pass over all three blades and that means it's going to get a finer shred by the time it, it gets to the outside. So you can use that method when you're mulching up leaves um, because what's going to happen is if you just mow over it you're going to have leaves that only hit the outside blade on the right side and they're only going to get like say a 50 percent reduction and you want to get you want to get them shred up as fine as you can to hide them in the grass uh, in this case we can't really hide them in the grass there's just not a lot of turf area and there's too many leaves and that's going to happen and you can see I'm discharging it into uh, the flower beds. That stuff doesn't matter at this location. She likes us to put leaves in the flower bed to insulate them. On any other property, we don't do that. Um, so, I mean, it's just one of those things that unless they request it, we don't do it. Now, in this situation, the leaves are too thick over there to actually get the mower to, you know, move stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take little bites out of the real big pile with the mower. And like I said, I'm using the outside say foot to six inches on that left side of the mower and then we're gonna start piling them up there so right now I'm re reducing the size of that pile and then I'll start shooting the leaves towards that pile once they're at a decent amount of reduction then I'll start going back and forth and distributing them out in other ways so that it's not real real thick you don't want it super thick um, you just have to be able to what I mean by that is you don't want them piled up real high. So what's going to happen is if it's piled up real high, your mower's just going to plow it. You know, you don't want to move them around. You want to, and you'll see me move them around intentionally sometimes, but it's so that I can get the leaves out to where they're spread out enough that I can actually mow over it. Now with an, my older walk behind, like my uh, X Mark or my Toro walk behind, not like a walk behind push mower, but a larger, um, walk behind mower mine are a 36 inch I use a 36 inch because I can get in all of the back gates of the yards that I mow but the cool thing with a walk behind is that you can actually pop the front of the mower up and do a willy over big piles of leaves like this and you don't have to take little bites you can use a whole deck there you can just and you know mow over it because you're able to pop the front up and you can uh, buy you know, um, let's see the best way to put this by keeping the front from going all the way down to the ground, kind of like my zero turns all the way at the ground. Well, it'll get bogged up if there's a bunch of leaves in it. But my walk behind, if it's bogging down, well, I just lift it up and I keep that that front side higher, and it keeps the bottom of the deck clear. So it'll only take as much as it can take, and you just you really have to pay attention to what the mower is doing this time of year when you're mulching leaves it doesn't matter what machine you have if you clog up underneath the deck and it stops the blades but the belt is still moving that friction is going to cause the belt to pop it's you know you just have to really pay attention to it sometimes you can smell it you know um you definitely smell it it smells like somebody roasting their tires you know spinning them out um so same same concept and um i know for a lot of guys that have been doing this for years that's pretty basic stuff but if you're new in business keep your eyes open on that um, keep spare belts for your mower 
because you're probably going to pop one during the season, especially during leaf season. The other thing is when you're mulching leaves, know that it puts off a ton of dust. A uh, ton of dust. Anyways, I'm not a big mask fan, but you can see here I'm wearing a mask. Um, it's a lot. You're, you're putting that into your lungs, and it's also getting into the air filter on your machine. So make sure that you pull the air filter off on a regular basis and tap it out to protect your mower. That air filter is the last line of defense for your engine. Uh, right here, this client's coming out and she's giving me a check. I want to let you know, this is one of my best clients. Um, she has helped train me and uh, teach me my value over the years. So when you have a, a client that's a gym, take care of them. If they take care of you, take care of them. So her property may not be, you know, well, it's really nice property, but it may not be like, it's, it's really weird. It's, it's not like this super high polished immaculate thing um, because she likes organic. So, you know, this is horrible for the turf, but it's great for the soil and she loves that. So, you know, different clients, you cater to different things. But, you know, she has helped show me my value over the years and has kept me from undercharging. So several times she's, you know, said, well, you know, I wouldn't do it for that price, Kevin, so I'm going to pay you this. And I'm like, well, well, you don't have to, but, you know. And uh, so when you have a good client, take care of them, they'll take care of you. Uh, I got this client, by the way. Um, back when Craigslist was, Craigslist was a thing, her daughter called me. Her daughter's still a client of mine to this day. Her daughter's a wonderful client of mine. Tips me on every service that we have. And, um, you know, always have compliments, always keep me busy with work. And... I got her as a referral from her daughter. So um, Craigslist used to be, you'd get a lot of junk, but you would get gems. Um, but you know, yeah, take care of the good clients and they'll take care of you. Just like your equipment, take care of your equipment and it'll take care of you. Use it as equipment, you know, beat it up, use it what it's for, intended for, sometimes push it to its limits because it's better to push the equipment to its limits than your body to its limits. Um, but, you know, make it last. Make it worth it. Now, I know a comment that's bound to come up is, why don't you have a shoot blocker? Why don't you have a mulch kit? All right, here's the thing. I've had mowers in the past that have had a mulch kit, and uh, it's absolute garbage for this type of work. Um, and if you cut, you know, bi-weekly yards in the summer, it's garbage, especially if they're wet, because it keeps everything under the deck, which is great if you're dealing with, you know, mowing the lawn and it's a small amount of clippings you're cutting off. And if you're cleaning up leaves and it's a small amount of leaves, it's great. But as you guys have seen on this channel, I do the crazy stuff. Tall lawns, a lot of leaves. And, uh, you know, while for my lawn service, I don't really do any tall lawns anymore. What I do run into, I mean, okay, so you see me cut a lot of tall lawns, but for my actual business, and not YouTube, my actual business, we're all weekly lawns. So for a long time, I actually cut lawns that were tall and bi-weekly yards, and what ends, up, what ends up happening if you're trying to mulch those yards is it bogs down the machine, and it doesn't leave a really good cut. It'll leave clumps and stuff behind, and uh, it takes a lot longer versus side discharge. So when you get good at using a side discharge and knowing how far your machine's gonna shoot the material, it's a great method, especially when you're doing large amounts of leaves like this. It's a great way to mulch leaves. Now a, um, a shoot blocker would be a great addition because you can control whether it's open or closed really easy. You can't do that with a mulch kit. Now if you wanted to remove the leaves from the property, uh, what you would do is just shoot them into a pile and then you could shoot them outward and then shoot them back into a pile if you wanted them to be reduced more so that you would have more space on your trailer so you're just tarping them and putting them in a trailer or you're just getting them into a pile so that you can bag them uh, into trash bags and either haul those away or put them at the curb well you can do that use your mower like a big rake put them in a pile they're reduced in size by shredding them up with the mower and then after that you know it's really up to you how you how you want to handle it 
If it's not a ton of leaves, you can just mulch it into the grass. No biggie. If you want to uh, tarp it and haul it away on your setup, that's pretty quick. That's just as fast as uh, using a leaf loader. The only downside is with the leaf loader, you dig, do get them to be shred up more. So it's pretty comparable to what I'm doing now. And by tarping them, you can actually be pretty quick and efficient on getting them off the property. The only downside is, like I said, it takes up so much space in your trailer. So if you're gonna go that method, um, you'll definitely want to do some leaf reduction. And I'm about to bring a pile up to the camera so you can see how much smaller the leaves are compared to when we started. Um, so, you know, I didn't have a leaf loader a long time ago. And um, what I would do is I would, just like I said, reduce the size of the leaves, use the mower like a rake to put them in a pile, and then from there I would tarp them. And that was my method of getting them off the property. But I've done the bagging thing too. It's not that fun. I think tarps are pretty efficient because you can just put it by the pile and you can either use your, your blower to blow it onto the tarp or you can use your, um, you know, you can use your blower, sorry, you can put it there and then use a shovel or a rake or how you want to get them on there. I've used all sorts of different methods. I'll walk through them. That's actually a pretty good method um, just to get the leaves moved. Now this property is a very unique property um, and it's it's the only one I have like this like she likes me to leave the leaves on the property and has been very very specific with me about never removing leaves from the property like uh, last year I made a video and I was like hey I'm gonna show you this cyclone rake and um, you know I told you that she likes the leaves left on the property well she actually called me before I had an opportunity to tell her that hey I just did that for the video and she was like hey I don't want leaves taken off my property and it wasn't even a concern on is it going to cost more she just doesn't want leaves taken off the property she wants them mulched into it and uh, she you know sees the benefit in the soil and in the micro fungi and all the organic organisms that actually grow and benefit from having the degrading material on her property so I completely respect that and you know that's something that like I said it's very unique to this property most people don't want that when you do a leaf cleanup it's not come shred them up on my property it's come shred them up and get them out of here really they don't care how you get them out they just don't want them there and uh, you know so for me I've found that as long as and like I said this isn't a good representation of what I'm talking about here but as long as the property looks very very good when you're when you're leaving like it's um, cleaned up really well a lot of people don't care whether or not you vacuum them up and haul them away or if you tarp them or if you bag them as long as it's not their problem anymore now I have had people ask me if I vacuum them up and haul them away and this and that and they're they know that it costs more for a certain type of setup and a certain type of crew because it takes longer and they know that you know people charge accordingly all right first off i want to thank jason and chris christine for the uh mask um really came in handy i won their uh recent thousand sub giveaway which was awesome <laughs> never win anything so it's really cool all right, so I, I've gotten the question several times. Um, why don't you mulch? Isn't it better for the grass? Well, here's the truth, okay? When you've got a lot of leaves and you shred them up, if you've got enough that you can shred up and it hides away in the grass, you're probably safe. It's not gonna damage the grass. It's gonna help build the soil. But in cases like this, where it's matting down over a lot of it, and this is very, very finely shred, okay? You can shred it up finer if you have grass and you can hide it. Um, it's not going to damage anything, but over here, this is how, this is how we leave it. This is what she wants. And, uh, the thing is, this is thick. Okay. Like it's still, you know, easily, you know, five, five inches deep or so. And I mean, it is very finely shred up. As you can see, here's my hand in perspective. It's very finely shred up. 
but that's what we've got now what we're going to do is we're going to kick a lot of this with the blowers rubber towards the back fence and in the beds and stuff but you know i mean it just you might have seen me slipping around the soil stays soft over here stuff just doesn't grow uh because of how how many leaves there are so you can mulch a few and you'll be all right but a lot you know it's um it's the same reason let me just put it this way all right the reason why putting mulch in a flower bed helps stop weeds from growing is because it creates an oxygen barrier it's choking out oxygen to the soil and new grass won't grow and the other thing is it blocks sunlight plants need both of those to grow so this is horrible for your lawn and i wouldn't suggest it but you know this is what they want to do it's economical and they don't mind it so if they don't mind it and that's what they want to do hey i'm down to i'm down to do whatever i am to please all right james so we're going to kick all this it, I, don't, I don't care about like this so much because that's actually pretty thin over there but where we've got this big ridge let's just bust that up i want to disperse it it can go in the flower bed it can go over here it can go wherever okay mm -hmm. okay I'll All right, I know that's crazy, but that's that, and that's how she likes having it left. I did come in. We just dispersed it so that it's not super thick, and it'll break down over the next couple months before we come back in the spring. Of course, we're going to be back for probably one more leaf cleanup. We've got to go work on some flower beds now, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I hope this video was uh, interesting to you. You got to look at this guy's leaf box right behind me, okay? It's huge! <laughs> Let's see if he's turning, we'll get a better look. They're about to pull up. Get a good look at that. It's huge. It makes our box look like a little baby box. 